awo shalom ras tafari inne ras yadinos tafari inne I am Wendem Yado of the Lion of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty. And um, before we continue with uh, this week's um, this week's parsha, and this week's uh, parsha is known as Tzave Tzawe Tzawe, which means which means you command or Izazacho Bamarinya command them. Now, <clears throat> what's interesting about this particular Torah portion is last year those those brothers and sisters who have been um, diligent, in other words, those who understand the matter to a sufficient degree, might have recalled that around. This time last year, let's clear this because it doesn't connect. This does connect with the astro, with the astro theology, and 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 the spirituality is connected with the heavens. And and see, here's what we understand: um, God's clock, God's clock, God's timing. The the real, what time is it? Is based on the heavenly, is based on the heavenly signs, and 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 the scriptures teach this. Genesis one verse fourteen. We've touched on it before, and we'll probably touch on it again. But let's get into this right here because we hear about wars and rumors of wars, right? There's all these wars and rumors of wars, and now the present rumor is concerning Iran. You know what the Israelis gonna do, what uh, Americans gonna do? Does Obama support it? He he's been giving all these speeches. Basically, you know, it's election. It's election year, so I'm sure most folks kind of understand that, or should at least understand that already. It's an election year, and seeing that it is. Seeing that it is an election year, we get these sort of um, campaign slogans and promises. But so, no doubt you all heard about the nuclear issue going on in the Middle East, right? Um, concerning um, Iran. But here's what we want to say before we even go into this any any deeper, because we might just see we're hearing a lot of a lot. There's been wars. We know the the, the 20th century. Um, has seen so many disgusting wars. In fact, there's a vid that we just checked out again. Um, it has Mumia Abu Jamal, and I think the reasons is either it's the reasons for war or something about the lying reasons behind war. And it kind of explores the the end of World War II in that period of time. Um, Leading up to the Cold War, well, really leading up from the end of World War II, basically we can say World War II, straight through, has been wars and rumors of wars. I mean, many, many people, many lives have been lost in it. But these wars have not affected America. In other words, America, for the most part, besides 9/11, you know, if we would consider that a so-called outside attack. Some say it's an inside job. But besides Pearl Harbor, but then Pearl Harbor is much like 9-11, if you understand what the media is not and probably won't report because the media is the fourth estate. But concerning Iran, we want to say this. Iran is the end of the matrix. What do we mean by that? What, 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 what does that mean that Iran is the end of the matrix? Well, there's a lot of correspondence right now. We thought it, it, it would be really important for us to at least, first of all, say that Iran is the end of the matrix, the Babylonian matrix. And therefore, seeing Iran in the news, even Syria, Syria and the whole Arab world, but 
particularly, there's particular key points. Last year, around this time, we were speaking about um, Gaddafi. And we were speaking about the, the Sabbath Zakor. We even um, made certain links with um, um, the UN Ambassador Rice and even previously Condoleezza Rice in an Esther sort of role for us as the once lost but now found Beta Israel or as black Hebrews or Afro Hebrews. Now some would say, Oh, she's and but those people don't really understand. They don't really understand. So we do have our black Esthers. We do have our black Donnells even in this particular time, but Satan and the accomplices, in other words, the enemy and the accomplices think that they're wiser, think they're wiser than Donnell. But let me remind you, and, and remember where you probably have heard it first, that Iran is the end of the Babylonian matrix. So we are approaching the end of the beginning. You always, people say, well, is this the beginning of the end? No, this is the end of the beginning. And this is the, the particular time and space that we're presently in. So we wanted to touch on the Sabbath of Zakor. Now, if you go to our Ethiopian World Net um, channel, and you put in let's let's write this here so you can check this out. Um, the Sabbath Zakor or the Sabbath of Remembrance, right? And now the Sabbath Zakor, the Sabbath Zakor always precedes, right? It, it always is the Sabbath right before what's known as Purim, right? Now, Purim, Purim, I hope you can see this. Maybe we'll get, get a little more light on this. Hopefully, you can see this pretty well. Now, Purim equals what, what some would call lots, but another way of saying Purim really is to say dice. That's what a poor, poor is. So, this will be dice in the plural sense. Poor is dice. In other words, it's like rolling the dice. I mean, I'm sure you all are familiar with what dice is. But in case some people don't understand what we mean, you know, like this is this is dice, right? This is dice. This is what poor to say poorin is to say dice. So poorin in a sense links its root meaning is linked to dice. All right, I want you to keep this in mind, and then go, you can Google it, you can the Wikipedia it, you can Schofield reference it, Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. There's a lot of resources out there, and there's even other resources that you, you, you can and you should use, you know, study and show yourself approved. But the point is that you wonder why there's so much in the media about an attack happening around this time. They say any time between now and August is because of the heavens. It's because of the alignment. In other words, for the Jews, or the so-called Jews, the Jews who call themselves Jews, speaking of the white Ashkenazi, the present rulers of the state, of Israel, the so-called Jewish state. It's not the Israelite kingdom. That has been um, relocated, you understand. In other words, Solomon had a son named David. David had a son named Solomon, right? Uh, Solomon had a son named David. And, uh, excuse me, David had a son named Solomon. And Solomon had a son named David. And it's he who renewed. The um, let me put down this dice, rolling the dice, right? So, how many of you have rolled dice before? Some people call dice a game of chance, 
Some people call dice a game. But that's what poor equals, right? Now, poor, it's, it's important for you to understand that um, te ave, let's put this right here, te, right? te ave, which is actually number, is number 20. It's the 20th, it's the 20th Shabbat after the Simchat Torah. Now, why is this significant? You see, if you if you're up on your your, your your studies, and this is one of the interesting things, you know, this is really the half of the story, our Hebraic, um, and and our, you could say Jewish or Israelitish identity as we once lost but now found Beta Israel. There, there's so much within so-called Judaism. You understand? Whichever form you initially learn Judaism, but as long as it's based on the scriptures and Torah, that we as a people, we as black people, you know, we really can vibe this. And some of you already know this. Others are still standing outside. But why is this important right here? Well, we said that there's a special connection, right? There's a special connection, and, and, and this is in the section 433 of this particular document right here, 433, right? 433, you can check this out, Shimmo is a compilation of, um, of uh, some online uh, wiki pages, so forth and so on. And so we're, we're here, and you can see this particular section right here, the connection right, to the Sabbath, the Zakor, right? And now, this is a special Sabbath. Now, first of all, this year, when is, when is, um, when is uh, Purim? Purim, when is Purim? I think it's, it's, it's the, it's the eighth, nightfall of the eighth. Um, let's see if we can, uh, we just had looked it up. Previously, nightfall of the eighth is pouring this year. All right, and as we said before, go and if you can go check out the vid that we put up previously. If you can, if you can check out the vid, just just look up Sabbath Sabbath Zakor Z A C H O R, and just take a glance at last year's vid. Now. We don't. We're not making any. We're not making any prophecies on our own concerning, you know, whether they're going to attack Iran or not, so forth. So all we're stating is this: that Iran, based on the prophecies already in the scripture, Iran is the end of the Babylonian matrix. is is symbolic of it, and we learn this from Daniel. So when we hear all this talk of, of war and rumor of war that's going on, it's very significant, it's very prophetic. Now, we're about to move into a particular window. Now, if you study even modern Israeli and so-called Jewish history concerning um, dates and times and certain seasons, you recognize there are reasons for the season. So if you're hearing a lot about Iran, 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 they need to stop Iran, and, and, and Israel, uh, the Jews, might attack Iran, but Obama says he supports them, and will it be a joint Israel-U.S. Um, attack or something like that on Iran? And then on the next side, the Iranians saying, listen, we're just doing peaceful, you know, peaceful um, energy. We just want energy. So there's a, there's a lot of um, war and rumor of war. Now, the Moshiach, Joshua, or Yahshua, already told us that there will be wars and rumors of war. So it doesn't surprise us. Just because we hear a new war, so forth and so on, or we hear about some conflict going on in the world. We've already been told these things. See, the wicked and adulterous generation, they look for a sign. So we're not looking for a sign. What we're doing is 
confirming and affirming and verifying when we see the signs. So when we see these signs, we say, oh, oh that's just like um, the Moshiach said, you understand, in, 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 in Mateo's, uh, uh, Marcos, Lucas, or Johannes, that, is, that was written in the epistles. Hawadio Paolo says it. Or it's, it's another one of the Hawadiyat. Or perhaps it's in the book of um, Johannes Rai, the, the Revelation. Or perhaps we need to go to the Belui, the Belui Kidan. You understand? Or, or the old so-called Testament or the, or the foundational books. Perhaps it's in the Torah. Perhaps it's in the, 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 the Ketubim what's known as the Ketubim, or the writing, or we know as the Metzahif. Perhaps it's in the, in, in the Psalms of David, the, the Tehillim, the Mezmur Dawit, or perhaps it's in the Nebiya. Perhaps it's in one of the seven seals, you know, one of the books, you understand, that are composed, what we know as the Bible, or the Ethiopic canon, but in particular, we know it as the Book of the Seven Seals, the Metzhaf Edus of the King of Kings. Translations, notwithstanding, you know, you can see it in translation, but when we study it, we study it in the pure language of the King of Kings, of Kedamawi Haile Selassie. Yet, the basic references are there even in a good or decent English translation like the so-called King James Version, the Schofield um, the Schofield Bible. So, what we, we we felt it important that we make some mention. First of all, that Iran. It's interesting, you know, um, because there are evil spirits in the world, and and it's not us prophesizing this but we are speaking prophetically what is in the scriptures when it speaks about there are these um, these uh, spirits and men and people who false prophets they say which are trying to rally prepare all these nations prepare for this great conflict now it's, it, it's biblically it's biblically referenced there's a couple of um, um, documents we want to bring into this. Give us one moment. All right. So here we go, brothers and sisters. Um, we're just looking at it a little bit earlier, and we don't want to say anything before we confirm it. Yeah, we could have said it. Nightfall, March 8th. Now, the the Zakor, which means like a, a remembrance, is actually March 7th, 20, March 7th, 2012. And the reading is Deuteronomy 25, 17 to 19, right? So there's... um. There's, I, I think this is the fast, there's the fast, there's a period of fasting, um, which is the uh, Ta'ani, to Esther, but we're moving around the time of the Zakor. Now, the Zakor is the, is the seventh. Now, the Shabbat or the Sabbat Zakor is, 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 the, is a special Sabbath, and it is always right before the Sabbath that immediately precedes Purim. Now, Purim means what? Purim, Purim means, means lots. With these dice right here, this is, this is, this is, this is what Purim basically is, 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 is dice. Now, this is interesting, but this is, this is very, very interesting. Now, first of all, Purim is not one of the is not a a a a festival a holy day of 
Yah or Jah, and it was not one of the commanded. That's the best way to say it. It's not one of the commanded. Um, it's not one of our seven, what we call high holy days. It's not one of the seven high holy days. However, it is significant because of the story that it contains, the deliverance of the Jews or the Hebrews of Persia. And no doubt you know that the Hebrews predominantly are a black people when we speak about ethnically. I'm not talking about just one who is in the religion or has converted to the religion, but we're speaking about the true, the true Hebrews and Israelites are an Afro-Shemitic people. You know, and there's also, you know, there's further proof, proof of this as well. So, not that Babylon or, Bush, or not Bush, but who was Obama, not that they really, um, they might listen to, to people like us um, as far as um, might have spies listening to us, see what we say, see if we are radical or whatnot like that. No, we just keep the sabbatical, basically. And if keeping the sabbatical is radical, then, then I and I will be considered radical. But what really is radical is what's going on in the world and all of this, all of this um, hype towards war. And we have a feeling about this, and, and we, we're just going to say it as this is our feeling. This, this is not scripture. We're just sharing this part. We're going to get into the scripture. Make no mistake about it. But we're just sharing our vibe that something, all this, this, um, this drive, there, there seems to be a drive to attack, attack, attack Iran. But remember, Iran symbolizes the end of the matrix or the Babylonian matrix. So we can call, if there should be, in this time space between now, between Zakor, Zakor, from, from this time, Purim, Passover might be an opportunity as well. Anytime leading up to August, you see, and, and, and when we look at um, anytime leading up to... Um, Yeah, any time leading, any time this year, basically. Should we see an Israeli or perhaps an American or a joint American-Israeli attack on um, Iran, a military attack? No, that a countdown. We, we would have begun a prophetic countdown. And, and this is what's so interesting about this. People will say, well, the Bible prophesies. Yes, but the individual, the individual decisions that men and people got to make um, are still in people's free will. Um, there's so much to this, brothers and sisters. And, and like I said, I did not go through... Um, you know, a, a, a nice, neat lesson. All I'm saying is that, first of all, um, Purim is coming. You understand? Know Purim. Um, we need to teach on Purim. Our black queen, Esther, she, she saved her people because she was a, she was a real um, good black woman, Esther. I have likened Esther in one sense to Condoleezza Rice. Some of y'all might disagree. That's your right. I've likened her to this other rice, the 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 um one who is a UN ambassador. We saw a sign of Sabbath Zakor in what occurred with Libya and in particular with um Gaddafi. Um We didn't anticipate his 
killing because we thought he might have had the sense to leave. But within the scenario that we pointed out in last year's Sabbath Zakor, or the Sabbath of Remembrance, we liken him vis-a-vis -vis, um, the Ethiopian Hebrew and elect Rastafari agenda. We liken him to be a Haman. He was a, a, a Haman type. Now, a lot of this requires some study, my brothers and sisters, for me to go through it all now. Hopefully you're studying along and, 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 and you get this, and, or, or you get at least enough of it and have the motivation to study out on the other aspect of it. This is one reason why, you know, though there's only a couple more, um, there's about three more, three more readings from this particular book, uh, Ki Tissa, um, Vayachel, and uh, Pekude. Pekude are the last three from, from um, Shemo, the Hebrew book of Exodus. But to even have this as 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 a home study copy, because there's a lot of there's, there's a lot of nuanced information that um, we try to point to in our teachings when it's related or when we are inclined that is some relationship with the particular teaching that we're teaching on. But to have this as your own reference, you understand know this one as well as must be in the next the next kufa, um, uh, Bereshit, Bereshit, you know, which is Genesis, and then Shemot, and we're about to uh, um, head to um, the third, um, Vayikra, Vayikra, which is Leviticus, and we're about to get into those studies coming up in about Jah willing, Yah willing, I and I live in about three or so, say say about four weeks from now, we'll be in um, Vayikra, which is the Hebrew for um, the book of Leviticus, or the Ori Ze Lewawiya. But Shemot, which is Exodus, is very important. And we are referencing page 433 right here concerning the uh, Purim, coming up Purim, which is all to take place actually um, this this week. So for us, it's a metasebia. Metasebia is another way of saying, metasebia is another way of saying um, zakor. Zakor from zakar to remember as zakarai or zakarius, to the remembrance of Yah. Bamarinya in Amharic, when we say metasebia, it's a reminder, remembrance in the sense of causing to, causing to think about, causing to think about. Now, on Sabbath, on, on the Sabbath Zakor, which actually was the previous Sabbath, or the Tzave number 20, you know saying, the 20th Sabbath, in our um, Torah reading cycle. The Sabbath just before Purim, um, Hebrews and, and Jews, black and, and, and other nations, read Deuteronomy 25, 17 to 19, which instructs us as black Jews and, and, and other Jews to remember which is Zakor, remember Zakor, what Amalek did in attacking the Israelites. Now, if you look at the previous um, Zakor, uh, Shabbat or Sabbath Zakor that we posted um, last year, roughly around this time, we made an analogy and a comparison of Haman on one, on one level with Gaddafi on, on the next level. Of course, this totally divides the, it's like, it's, it's like Moses um, parting the Red Sea. You, you know what I mean? There are many um, spiritual Egyptians 
that that drown in that higher logic because they look at actually Gaddafi. There's a lot of black folks who look at Gaddafi as as a, as a hero or something because he 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 had crazy. He stood up. He gave money, you know, um, to certain black groups and and other. Um, continental African so forth and so on but the reason why we came out against Gaddafi in particular first of all it was a spiritual inspiration for us to do so when 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 Yahweh's when his spirit is upon you we 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 we, we were for lack of a better word compelled to do so to put out those messages and in fact there's another vid that we didn't actually, this is after he, he already was killed, so forth and so on, which we kind of held in reserve, but we might still post for those who might be interested in at least the full story on on Gaddafi, or at least the full message that we um, were inspired and had done to post. But that was a different matter than this. Now, many of the Jews, the European white Jews, and the rulers of the state of Israel, they are trying to convince themselves that, well, Haman is like Mahmoud Anidajad or is like the Iranian government, but they are confusing and convoluting the story. This is why we bethink that should they make their attack around this time, see, they might make the attack around this time, um, Purim time, they might wait until Passover or at some particular point. Now, what's interesting is when um, when the Israelis decide to do certain things, you can get a good idea if you understand Judaism, if you understand the calendar, if you understand what is significant, first of all, to any Heb, Heb or Hebrew or Jew. You understand? When you understand that, that means when you understand Torah, when you understand the whole the whole psychology, hearing this talk now in the media, I automatically thought about Purim. Because why? Purim is is rolling the dice. You know, Purim is that, that, that that's what Purim is. I have three, actually. Most people have two. You know, so I have three dice here, but but it's rolling the dice. That's what a poor is. You see what I'm saying? It's interesting, that whole dice connection. But remember, Iran is the end of the Babylonian matrix, and it's the end of the beginning, should they choose to attack between now and any time before December 21st, 2012. It's not propitious. It is really, really not propitious. Because, see, what they have done is hyping themselves up to believe that this is a threat like the Holocaust because certain leaders or leaders have in Iran have spoken politically about removing the so-called European Jewish state from that area to so-called white, what they call Israel off the map. But another thing that people don't recognize about Ahmed Anidajad and some of the Iranians, they are not Arabs, they're Persians. Menemenetekel u partisan or u farisan. In other words, you've been weighed, measured, lacking, and found and found wanting. You understand? Um, that part from um, Daniel's prophecy, which is hopefully another part of this that we'll touch on. But we have, you know, watch and pray, brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? Um, there are certain spirits which are trying to escalate a conflict because they know too that it will be the end of the beginning. We're already we've already experienced 
the beginning of this end time. We're already in this end time. I mean, look at this storm that just came through. My question to one is, is it the God of the Bible or is it harp that is doing this storm? You understand? Either way, it's fulfilling biblical prophecy about the size of the hail. Some of the news reporters said they've never seen hail so big before. This is also another, an, an, another important sign within Scripture. You see, we're not looking for these signs, but when we see these signs, we have to pay attention and to note that and to figure out, well, the, is this significant? In other words, has, has Yahweh revealed through the Nabiyah, through the prophets, or through the Moshiach himself, or through the Hawariyah, has he revealed through Dawit, through David, has he revealed through Musa, through Orit, Torah, anything that might help us in ordering our steps aright, in keeping our spiritual heart and mind aright? And of course, he has. Now, so we're instructed to remember the Beta Israel are to remember Zakor, what Amalek. Amalek did in attacking the Israelites. Now, so far, um, people would say, you know, not to even get, in, I don't want to get into the politics because, you know, people are very, it's, it's like politics is their religion. You know what I mean? Politics is not our religion. But um, basically, Iran hasn't attacked, um, hasn't attacked Israel. In fact, the Iranians and even some um, Orthodox Jews, like the Jews, the men in black sort of Jews, um, they were at this conference all together. They'll make it seem like the Iranians are just haters of the Jewish people. But there are some Jews, Orthodox Torah reading Jews, who actually support Iran. In other words, who... who who would like to dialogue, but those are not the Jews, the Jewish mentality that is running or administering the fears of the state of Israel. It's the more secular um, and and not so, so, so religious um, Jews. Um, that are running the affairs and that are also blowing the trumpet, you understand, and, and have been stimulating through media a lot of hype, you understand, about this whole nuclear, um, this nuclear situation. Now, how are we invested in this? Well, let's think about it. A nuclear plant is in Demona and the African Hebrews of Jerusalem, they also have a settlement in Demona as well. So, should there be a counterattack from some of our people in the Holy Land or in Israel might be in harm's way. You see what I'm saying? So, we do have a vested interest in this. You see what I'm saying? Because we have our Afro, Afro-Hebrew Afro people from America, like us, the once lost but now found Beta Israel, as well as many Beta Israel of Ethiopia as well. In other words, black Hebrews and black Jews are there as well. We say that not so much to our brothers and sisters, but to some of the other folks that may want to know, well, where do we get off talking about this? Why are we interested? Because that land is our land. One thing that some of the Iranians said, they said, how is it that when the, the Jews first left that part of the world sometime after, say, 70 A.D., they were of the race of the Ethiopians. They were black. But when they returned, 
they returned white. That's one of the other aspects of contention between the Persians and the Ashkenazi Jews running the state of Israel and their lobbyists over here too, who of course, you know why they want a war? Because war makes money. So what they're doing basically is doing this at this time of the year. They are, it's their way of celebrating Purim. They're rolling the dice. Should we attack? Should we not attack? Should we attack? Should we not attack? But now, the context of Purim applied in Gaddafi's case. And, and when you see our video for um, the Sabbath uh, Zakor um, 2011, you might be able to, at least you will hear our reasoning and our arguments why, you know, why we um, had come to, how we have come to that conclusion and what's the evidence, what's the documentation. Now, in um, the Haftarah, the Haftarah for Sabbath or Shabbat Zakor, is 1 Samuel 15, chapter 2 to verse 34, or 1 to 34. And 1 Samuel chapter 15, it describes Saul's encounter with Amalek. And Saul's and Samuel's treatment of the Amalek Awiyah Negus Agag. Who was Agag? And we mentioned this before. You might have recalled this, um, that Agag, right? Agag, and this is the Hebrew, right? Can you see that? This is the Hebrew. Agag equals the Egyptian. This is the, right? Equals the Egyptian, a pet. Now you know who a pep is, right? A pep is also known as Apophis. See, see, that's significant. That that is that's a very significant connection because um, although many of these um, documents right here, it, it it they can help, you know, based on the prevailing uh, Jewish or Hebrew and 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 um, Torah-based ideas, it's very good. We have yet to also now bring our own truth and our own Ethiopic root to bear on this because when we do, we will make these sort of a connections as a God equals a pet. Now, why is this important? Well, this is important because when we look at the, Amalek, the, the Amalekite king, his name was a God. Now, it's interesting that the Hexos or the Hexos, right, of, of Egypt, their rulership began with a, an Apep, one who was named Apep, Apophis, and it ended, their last ruler in Egypt was an Apep or Apophis. So it began with an Apophis and it ended the Hexos, the Hexal rule in ancient Egypt. Now, why is that important? Stay tuned. Now, Purim, in turn, it commemorates the story of Astia. Now, remember we said that, that a, lot of, a lot of these timings and calculations, what is Astia? Now, we wrote in pretty bold type right here, but we might have a um, Astia, or Esther, it mean, her name means star. Astia, like we say asterisk. You know what I'm saying? When we say asterisk, we basically say Esther's name Ethiopically. So, Purim, in turn, it commemorates the story of Esther and the, and the Israelite or the Hebrew people's victory over Haman. Haman had a plan to kill the, the Yidin, you know what I'm saying, or the, or the Yehuda. You understand the Yehuda Sawoch. You understand um, the Jews. And 
this is told in the book of Esther, Esther chapter 1 and 1 to Esther chapter 10 and 3. Esther chapter 3 and 1, it identifies Haman as an Agagite. And thus a descendant of Amalek. So we see the link because Haman is an Agagite. So Haman is a Pepite or Haman is of the Apophis sect. He's a descendant of the Apophians, right? Therefore, an Agagite, and this is now the link with Amalek. So he's also a descendant of Amalek. Now, this is very important because Numbers chapter 24 and 7, it identifies the Agagites with the Amalekites. Alterna alternatively, there's a midrash, right? There's a study that tells the story that between King Agag's capture by Saul and his killing by Samuel, Agag fathered a child from whom Haman in turn descended, from whom Haman years later descended. So now on the Shabbat Zakor, which would have actually been the previous Sabbath, the Sabbath of Tetzave, or the 20th Torah portion reading and feeding, which is which was last Saturday or last Friday evening, the, the, the last Shabbat, in other words. Now, um, they say that when the Parsha uh, Tetzave coincides with Shabbat Zakor, the special Sabbath immediately preceding Purim, as it does in 2012, 2013, 2015, 2017, and 2018. The Haftarah, right now, it's interesting because basically the Ashkenazi Juden, Juden and the Sephardi or the Sephardic Juden, they both read 1 Samuel. One starts from verse 2, the Ashkenazi, and the Sephardi start from verse 1 of chapter 15 to verse 34. Now, this is very significant. You know, we're going to continue with this this week's Torah portion and, 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 and touch on the breastplate and the Urim and Thummim and, and some of the classic uh, rabbinic interpretations for for Tetzave or Izizacho. Um, but we thought it important seeing that um, the uh, Purim, according to this document here, um, the, the Rastafari Hebraic calendar, um, I think I had uh, um, pointed this out. This, is, this was updated. This kind of gives you at least this year, for this year, so ones can have uh, a basic idea of when certain holy days are or holidays, you know, learning the calendar, learning time. It begins off first with remembering the Shabbat and keeping the Shabbat Yetikadasa, keeping it set a, set apart. Then recognizing also in that remembering the Sabbath is 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 Ha Elohim's order, where evening and morning is one day. Not from noon to noon like Babylon lives. So therefore, at midnight, after midnight, peeps, some people will say it's a new day. But day, from the very beginning, referred to light. So at night, how can it be day? This shows the backwardness and the confusion and how the whole world has been deceived and is functioning all out of time or on wrong time, not in God's time. So we pointed out and we continue to point out that the heavens, Yah already said, Elohim from the very beginning said that the, that the sun, the moon, and the stars, you understand, are for, for signs, right, and seasons, days, and years. Now what's different about this, this um, Purim, basically, is the coinciding 
of the part of Shah te, te Ave that coincides with Shabbat Zakor. You see, um, last year, 2011, it didn't coincide. But this year, next year, 2014 skip, 2015, 2016 skip, 2017, and 2018. Now, this too, we be, you know, we think that this too is significant as well when we understand the seven-year period of time as we head into the end of the beginning. In other words, the beginning of the end already, already has been going on. We can see this from the signs, so forth and so on. But as things are escalating more and more, there must be certain significant. If there is an attack on, on Iran, potentially it can really destabilize the whole global. And I mean, if, if we didn't feel that we was in a war with Iraq, when, you know, when the Iraq war went on. I think for sure the sense of global um, catastrophe and, 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 and cataclysm will be much more palatable should what we keep hearing these rumors of occurs. Our advice to them is espele. In other words, go easy. You understand? Don't deceive yourself with the fact that when we said Gaddafi is a Haman type, Gaddafi was a Haman type for Ethiopian Hebrews and for the imperial the, the imperial government of Kedamawi, Haile Selassie. He, he he was like he was like um an unconverted Paul, in a sense. Maybe he converted later on, who knows. But well, I'm just trying to paint a particular picture. But we go into more detail, we are going into the details of that already. And, um, you know, we made that case. But it seems as though there are some spirits that are trying to gather all nations and all people into some sort of, 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 a, of a war mode. You know what I mean? I mean, we're not going to even break down the whole politics of China and Russia, you understand, um, who will, you know, who will, um, who will support, no doubt, who will support um, Iran, but Iran is Iran or Iran, Iran, is the end of the matrix for Babylon. And before we um, conclude this right here, let us just bring up this scripture. So are you are, are you good with what's written up there? I mean, I mean, did you take this down? Do you have a do you have a um um you know do you have a good idea of this? Because we want to go into some um. We're going to go into another aspect of this. Sabbath Zakor. Sabbath Zakor. Um, actually, that was that was the previous um, Sabbath coinciding with Tetave, number 20, the 20th Sabbath in the cycle. Um, there's a Zakor, which is actually um, the Eve of Purim. And if you look at this page 3, of the Rastafari Hebraic year for this year, 81 A.B., it says um, it says that Purim or Zakor is sunset March 7th, 2012, and then we have Purim for the nightfall March 8th, 2012. So this is the sixth. We're recording this actually on the sixth, and. It's, it's, it's not a day too soon, but this has been I and I meditation. The more we hear, you know, um, the drums of war. But it would be premature. A lot of folks are saying that 
that the Israelis got to do it now, otherwise it's too late. And they need to trust in Jah. They need to trust in, in Yahweh. But the fact is, there are a lot of Jews um, who don't have a Torah-based faith. They, they're very secular. They are motivated by secular interests. Although they might use the identity of the people, you know what I'm saying? And the more religious folks, you know, like when you look at the uh, Hasidim, man, the Hasidim went to um, Iran and, and fellowshiped with the Iranians. They didn't have a problem for the Iranians. Some of them protest against Zionism as it's going on in Palestine. Some of those same, you know, um, men in black so-called Jews, the Hasidim. So that shows us that, see, a lot of y'all may not know this because y'all may think that all Jews are Jews. You don't recognize that there are some divisions that they have amongst themselves, and not all um, support it. Usually it's the secular Jew who, who usually is advocating or in favor of this use of force. You see, we're learning that bullying is bad, you know? Yet there's a whole lot of bullying which is still going on, not just at your child's school or not among people like people bullying each other, you know, or children bullying each other or in school bullying each other, you know, or on the Internet or Facebook bullying each other. But this is what they, they do in politics. This is what governments are bullying each other. I mean, just think about it. There might be Iranians, men, women, children, who are going about their business, right? You know, just like you and me going about our business. But to protect a fear, an irrational and unwarranted fear, there might be either Israeli planes, American planes, or missiles, and people will die in a preemptive strike to stop another nation from getting the same thing that all the European and other nations have because they might have made certain statements that ones will say, oh, they want to get rid of the state of, of, of Israel. You know, um, they have political differences with the Ashkenazi and the European Jews. While strangely, interestingly enough, the Iranians, the leadership and others in the know, they recognize that the black Hebrews were the Hebrews that they know about, biblically speaking. Because this whole Haman thing, remember, Esther went to the king. The king was the king of Persia. The king of Persia, think about it for a moment. Persia is Iran. So if the, if the, if the so-called Jews in the state of Israel and their Zionist backers are going to use this occasion as a pretext, be warned that it backfires not on you. It's just a warning. Because it'll be hot to fire. In, in, in other words, then afterward, one would recognize that they should have trusted in Yahweh, in Adonai, and his word, and his Moshiach, and not continually take matters in their own hand and destroy the very creatures that. Adonai has made. Instead of being patient, instead of trusting Jah, we don't fear, but we have we have a sinking suspicion that things are about 
to heat up brothers and sisters, and things are about to heat up a lot. But so far, we're at the point in prophecy where it speaks about um, wars and rumors of wars. But let's go to the scriptures and let's connect something interesting with this. And I think we're going to clear this. We'll clear this, take this down, and we'll get into another part about what's really going on with um, this whole Israeli-Iran nuclear thing. Remember, we told you Iran is Persia. Persia is Iran. Don't use the pretext of Purim to attack Iran. From what we know of the scripture, it will not fear well. And, and we are also concerned for some of our people who are in Israel, such as those in Demona, such as the Beta Israel and others. Some of them are even in the army. You understand, of course, if they are, they will obey orders and, you know, do their jobs, as it were. You understand? And some might even forfeit their lives for such service if they've done it with a free conscience and a free will, you know, may Yah have mercy on them and mercy on their souls. But people, people, pay attention. Be warned. Shalom Rastafari. We're going to come in with part two of this, so stay tuned.